Hi everyone, I'm Robin. I'm a third year medical pharmacology student studying here at Swansea Uni and today I'm going to show you my dissertation tips and tricks on how to make your dissertation look fantastic, but not only to look fantastic, be fantastic. So let's have a look into the video. Okay, first up is my contents list and what you see here is when you type your essay one, type out all your subheadings, so introduction, methods and materials, results, discussion, have it all. Then what you want to do is make sure that you highlight these as heading one, change your font and style to whatever you want to be. Then you want to go on insert, a page break for each and every one. And what it's going to do is make sure that you have those clear settings for each and every one. Now we want to do is go on insert and go on page number and select our page number and close it. And when we go on references, table of contents and create a table of contents and change the format of that so we match it exactly, we can see here's all those subheadings have now been numbered on each page number and that just makes it really clear and concise, which is fantastic. So now we're looking at some image captions. So say I insert an image such as this one here. I want to be able to make sure that I label my figures. So if I right click, go on insert caption, figure one, I can change these figures to equation table or figure, and then I can have it above or below on your preference. And then I can change the number format as well. And I can also include chapter numbers, but this is okay for me. Then I'm just going to type out my title and make sure that everything is looking good and fine. Once I've done that, I can select the image and my figure legend and group them together so they're one. You'll see that I can do this for multiple and they'll change as it goes down. So this one's now on figure two. If I change these figures around and put the graph on top and the enzymes at the bottom, what I can do it is highlight the figure two, right click and press update field. What this is going to do is update that to now figure one because it's changed position and I can do that on the next one too. So say you don't want to constantly be changing your text to times Roman numerals or whatever you're going to use. You want to be able to make sure that it's the same font every single time. Well, what you can do is click on this button corner here and change whatever font you want. Make sure that you have all your defaults set and that you're happy with it. And then press set as default and press for this document only and okay. And what's gonna happen now is that when you have a text that you don't like in that font, you can press this button here and it'll set it to its default. Now what's really great about the table of contents is that you can click on the subheadings and it will bring you to that page where the subheadings is. But what if you want that, not just as a subheading, but in your text as well? Well what you can do is highlight where I say figure one here and go on insert, cross reference. Then you can pick whatever reference you want. So here I've picked figures and figure one and then I can change the entire format but I can still have that hyperlink to that word, which is incredibly helpful when you mention something like figure one, and then you want the reader to be able to click on that and see where figure one is instead of searching through all your documents. Now, spelling and grammar always gets me, and I don't like to go through pages and pages, so if I go on review, spelling and grammar, then you can see all of the mistakes that I've made and maybe any grammar errors or suggestions and press OK. So referencing is really important and it changes on your course. So you see here I'm on iFind and I go on my college, go on my course and I can see all the referencing guides here. If I go on the iFind and I find a paper, I can actually cite it directly there and then copy and paste it into my reference list here. Now that I've added a reference list, I can also update my table of contents. 
I can also go on Google Scholar and type in that paper and search and what you see I find the paper there which is great and I can have access to it if it is accessible but what you can also do is click on cited by and related articles. Cited by means that they're meant, these articles are mentioning that paper that you have searched for which is incredibly helpful and then you can look at related articles as well. That's it guys, I hope you loved this video. If you did like it and you think that you're going to use some of these tips and tricks in your dissertation, make sure that you give this video a like and follow Swansea Uni on all of the social media below.